Hmm. In today's episode, we're sculpting this, which means we're carving this into this. We'll show you how we do it, work some mad detailing magic, recap our sculpture, and dazzle you with breathtaking cinematics. Looking for top five entertainment for the next 40 minutes? Then park it right here. Oh, and park it right here. And stick around. Hey, hey, good morning, good day, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, City Sculptor, and you have made your way back to Pangasus Bay. Hey, it's great to have you here. And we're broadcasting from the top of the Java Ridge. Yeah, this is this big forested area that sits up on this rise here with spectacular views. One of the Amelia Earhart International Airport and two are downtown off in the distance. We're sitting north of downtown and you've got some beautiful views of the bay as well. That is not the subject of today's build. That's going to be uh, that's going to be a build for a future episode. But this, the Arabica Valley, is going to be the subject of today's build. And this is a massive space here, and we're not going to touch all of it today. In fact, we're just going to nibble off a part of that for today's episode. And I want to do a special build right down in this area down here, this one third, if you will, that goes from eh, this roundabout here, approximately across over to on the right side of the map here, this kind of this curve just off of this interchange here. And I divide this into a, like a third, right? So you got a one third down here, you got a, maybe a middle third, and then and I don't know, maybe scraps over here on the, on the other side. We'll figure out what we're going to do with that later. But this area here is going to be the subject of our, our build today. Now, we're going to have a, a focused build on education. We've got a lot of elementary schools that we need to build. We've got some colleges that we need to build because we've, if you remember, we've had some education challenges in the city. Now, at the high school level, we're fine. At the university level, we seem to be doing just fine. It's that elementary school and colleges that continue to give us a, a challenge. So we're going to address that today. Now, I also have a special call out from one of our viewers. It's Raymond Hughes 2269. And he said, I would become a Patreon supporter if you made me one of your Sims. Well, Raymond, you're going to want to buckle up, hold on to your hat or hold on to your wallet and stick around to the end. All right. Well, I just threw a lot at everybody today. So with all that as a backdrop, let's do this. So we're going to start off today by taking this big area that you see kind of right in the center of your screen here, and we're going to divide it into two distinct sections. And it's really going to be kind of almost like a one third, two third divide. We're going to start from this big, this I guess, very large roundabout. We'll stem down this hill and then carve all the way across over here. And so today's build is going to be focused in this northern, well, I guess in this case, it's it's it would be actually the northeastern one third of this area. And then the next build we're going to have is, is going to be over here in the southwestern one third, but or two thirds. But for today, like I said, we're going to we're going to just focus in this. So so what I want to start by doing is I want to pick an elevation. Uh, you know, I, I use my slope terrain tool and, and bring this elevation down into this little basin. First things first, though, let's maybe just kind of smooth this out, flatten it out a little bit so that we've got I just kind of a nice little soft landing spot. And then we'll come down into here, maybe to about there, and just bring this right on down. That'll give us the opportunity to create this nice little couplet road that runs down here. And it's not going to be anything big, not going to be anything fancy. We're just going to keep it one, uh, one offset apart. And let's just start somewhere down in here. I can't attach it right away. I think I'll have to figure out, you know, how to, uh, how to bring that in there. But I want to try and at least get it centered up with this, this roundabout. That's pretty close. So let's just go ahead and bring that straight down here. Yeah. Okay. Now we've got that in place. Now at the other end of this little uh, this little couplet road, we're going to come all the way down over here, and I want to connect it in uh, somewhere right around here where it says Brook Highway. So kind of in this space here, and I'm going to do so by building up the uh, earthen area here and across the freeway to create an overpass, a nice little overpass here. And the reason I want to build it up is because if you look across the freeway here, as I get down towards the freeway level, you can see there's a pretty significant hill back up here. In fact, it's probably one of the higher points in Pangasus Bay. We don't have a lot of elevation in the city. So I want to tie into that a little bit as we make our way across. Now, before I can do that, though, you've got these massive power lines that are running through here. So let's do this. Let's come in and I'll pause the game for a second, bulldoze those, knock them down. And then I'm going to grab those towers, but I'm going to sink it down underground. Just do a really quick reconnect in that space just for now. Now. And then as we build this out, we can reconnect some power towers later. That being said, now we've got the opportunity to take our shift terrain tool. Uh, I'm going to take the brush strength down just a little bit and probably bring the size down a little bit, maybe down to 70. Just kind of bring this up in this area here. And that's probably plenty tall. So let's just grab that elevation and we'll push this out and around here and bring it out a little ways too. I want to make sure I have a nice big landing pad and then I can come back here and carve back just a little bit. I'm going to take this elevation and, and put it on the other side here. 
There we go. Now with that in place, I can start the game back up here again. Let the game run a little bit. And now you can see we've got this, this nice little elevation here. Well, if I come back in, I can tie this in you know, into a spot up here. So let's just see what the elevation is, uh, kind of generally speaking. You can see we've got, this is going up about one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven or so contour lines. If I come back here and count six or seven up here, well, I, I think it puts us about here. So if I just take this out and sweep this out into this general direction, it'll blend in pretty nicely with what's going on in the hillside over there. And then I'll just come in and just soften it up around the edges here, just real quick like, at least now we've got a landing spot for our, you know, for our couplet. Now let's start with this side of the road here. I'm just going to bring, uh, see, I've got my parallel road on. I'm going to bring this right across the top here. Let's just go something along like this. And as I do so, it creates just this nice natural overpass there. And that's exactly the kind of look I was going for. I'll take this and I'm going to put on a simple curve. And I'm going to bend this out, kind of just heading off in this direction here. Not, again, not too precise. We might change it again in a later episode, but at least it starts us in the right direction. And we can now, on this side, kind of work our way down and reconnect over here. So I'll do that by grabbing my slope terrain tool. I'll pick a nice elevation maybe down around here, and I just, I'll just drive this on out. Yeah, something like that will do just fine. And then we can take our, you know, our little couplet road here and start heading down. Uh, just a nice, I think, simple curve. Now let's do this. Let's come out 100 and... 76 meters and 176 meters over into here there that, that creates a long gentle curve and now it's going to create a natural nice neat connection coming back over here so let's get rid of that and then let's just see how we can do this to connect these in there and now we've got this just a gentle little winding couplet road that makes its way through here it's going to create a natural division between our you know kind of our northeastern one-third and our southeastern two-thirds yeah hopefully this is going to be a big enough space in here i think it will be though so now as much as i like this uh prefab roundabout i'm probably gonna have to get rid of it and the reason is because they don't play well with these um you know couplets that are coming in so first things first let's pause the game a little bit here we're going to do some demolition and I'm gonna create a custom roundabout in this space. All right, so sit tight. Okay, there you go. Now you've got a roundabout, a you know, custom built roundabout that works in this space. It's not directly centered, but I think it's pretty darn close, and, and I think it looks pretty good. It should function very well to, you know, take care of the traffic in this space. So, all right, step one done. And now to the other side. This is going to be a little more complicated. Now, on this end, I want to build a diverging diamond interchange. I think this would be kind of cool. I haven't used one of those yet in the city, and uh, I, I've kind of wanted to try one out here. So let's just jump in here, and I'm going to take this and, and come across here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I just want to be able to kind of trim these sections back just a little bit. Whoops, we're gonna come out maybe about, let's see here, eh, let's come out about this far. Just cut across there. And then we're gonna cut these pieces out here and do the same thing on the other side. It doesn't have to be exact. All right, so now I've got the, uh, you know, I've got the bridge sections in place. And what I need to do is kind of have this crossover and make its way into here. So I'm going to use what's a uh, complex curve. Yeah, I'm going to use that one. And I'll start here in this, you know, this section right here. I'll go out 24, eh, maybe maybe 32. And then I'll bring that up 30, uh, 24 to the other side. And then just bring that right on into here, snapping right past that road. Let's just see if I can do the same thing on the other side now. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. There, all right, well, now we've got our crossovers in place. And let's come back in here and just make sure we've got everything going in the right direction. Nice. So now I gotta work on getting this connection here down to this level of freeway down over here without getting too close to this major interchange off ramp there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my uh, slope terrain tool. I'll decrease my brush size down to about 50. And then I'm gonna pick, you know, maybe a spot right about here. And then I'll just bend this down here. 
We've got that in place. Now, the next thing I'm going to need to do is come down in here and upgrade, I should say downgrade my freeway sections. There we go. And now I've got an attach point here. Uh, I can now take this out. Now I can start to work a road down into here. So I want to start by upgrading these sections here. Uh, it's like the very last segment of this road to a four lane segment. And that at least gives me like a little bump out there that I can attach to. So now it starts off as two lanes and then they have to merge in together and then flow into that freeway there. Let's do the same thing on the other side now. There you go. Oops, let's delete this guy right there. Now we've got we've got connections coming off in this direction and this direction down here. So it's a good start. And now we've got two other connections to make. It's this side and this side. So let's go ahead and do that. All in all, I you know, I kind of like the way that this this turned out. We've got uh we've got our first diverging diamond interchange here in the city. Nice. Now I can come in here and build out the core of our build. And that core of that build is going to be in this space here. Let me zoom out. In this space that's nestled down in between our parkway, our, you know, our little couplet road here and the freeway that's, you know, in this area here. So it's a long, narrow strip. And I want to build this out, you know, for today's episode. Uh, perfect that this plane came flying in here <laughs> because this is it kind of in a direct approach to Amelia Earhart International. And I thought if I put services in here, um, they're probably less likely to be impacted by noise pollution than residential would be. And, and so those can eat up a lot of this space down in here. As we think about next episode, when we come back and build out this space out here, which is going to be primarily a residential area, I think we're a little bit further out from the airport. So I think this will be a, these, these two builds will really complement each other nicely. So down in this space, let's th talk about some of the services that we need. I want to start with our education tab. Now, as you recall, we've been having challenges with the elementary school education in the city, really struggling to meet the demand that is out there. And you can see currently we have a capacity for 18,000 students in the, in the city. We have over 18,000 that are eligible. Even with the elementary schools that I've put in over the last few builds, it still hasn't kept pace with our demand. So we're going to do that today. We'll put in a couple of elementary schools, make, make like a little campus. And then the other one I want to point your attention to is our college. You can see we've got a capacity for 1,500 students. We've got eligible over 2,700 students, but we only have 346 who are currently attending. And I think I know the reason why. If you go back over to where our college is located, it's way down here in this kind of this, I want to call it a backwater corner down here, down at the end of the Yacht Club District. And while the Yacht Club District has a number of residents, let's just click on the little area tab here. You've got 9,000 residents in total. Only about 2,000 of those are teens, which I think would be eligible for that college. So you're drawing from a pretty small audience in this area. I think we just don't have a big enough audience for this college uh, to draw from. And so that'll be one of the things that we focus on over in this space here is building out kind of like a maybe it's a dual college campus sitting down in this space here just to again to eat up some space and give this big group of people a place to attend college and i think that should go a long ways to helping with our education challenges that we have in the city all right so our little education adventure starts down in this corner i'm going to grab a level terrain tool and i'm going to come back down into here and i just want to level out this this elevation down in here just a little bit there's Cherry Street up there and, and all this busy traffic up there. And our college is gonna nestle down into this little space here. Speaking of colleges, let's grab one of those. We're gonna go into our education tab, grab a college, and you can see this is a very large building. And so I wanna run this college back there about as far as I can go uh, without doing too much in the way of tearing. And then I wanna see where I should create my college entrance down in here. I think I should probably come out to about, uh, let's do it here. That'll be my crossing, if you will. I want to run this straight out like so. I'm going to move this college just temporarily and uh, bring this right straight out in this direction here. I'll just turn off these snap to guidelines and let's just see if I can get this college nestled in right down into this corner here without creating too much in the way of disruption. Yeah, as I get down in there, you can see there's not a lot of tearing going on. This is pretty sharp right in here. In fact, let's nudge it out one square just, eh, just to be safe. It's currently there. Let's spot it there. Okay. Now I can smooth that back out a little bit here. It's not too bad. 
Now I'm sure we can do some, uh, you know what, maybe I can put as a nice little retaining wall in there. So we're, we're starting off with that. And then I want to come out here with a just two lane road straight out of the center of this one and come to there. And the reason I want to do that is I've got an asset that I want to put into place next. And that asset comes from our administrative tab under the police and administration. And it's under the administration tab. It's this welfare office. Now, as I, as I click on that, you can see all throughout the city, there's roads that are all red, 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 red. And that's bad welfare coverage. But if I take that welfare office and I drop it into this space, look at that. It just changes this whole downtown area to a nice green, which really represents an improvement in the welfare coverage in the area. And so I thought that would be important to have in this space, really to just increase overall happiness and engagement of our residents. So let's do that now. Let's come back down into here. Go back to that tab, grab our welfare office, and put that right there. And then I can come in here with a, just a regular road, frame this up like so, and then you know do the same thing over here, just make sure that they're in alignment. And now I've got just kind of this nice little campus, if you will. It's almost like an administrative building for the campus, the college campus. I want to take that college, I want to upgrade it. And then I want to add one of these college libraries over here on this side. Yeah, I think that becomes a nice looking piece there. And then I want to do the same thing on the other side here. So we're just kind of creating some symmetry. Yeah, see, then I think that turns out really nicely. And in fact, I can come back in here, maybe with a pedestrian road, and just run right across the back here so that those are all connected via pedestrian road. You know, if I wanted to, I could probably even do this part of it here as a pedestrian road as well. And then I can come down into this space. Maybe what we'll do is we'll just grab some small plazas and just kind of uh, kind of custom create our own little park here. So something like that and like that. And then I can come in with some sidewalks and just kind of, I don't know, beautify that a little bit there. So there you go. There's our little college. Our college drops into there and you can see I've got lots of availability here, 1,500 out of this building, another 1,500 out of this other building. So our college availability now in the city has gone way up, 4,500, and we've got 1,100 that are eligible. There we go. I think we'll start seeing a better level of engagement. All right, on to our next section over here. This is the stretch of road that I want to play off of. So let's grab this two-lane road, come right out of, maybe right about here, right after the curve. Uh, and it's a pretty gentle curve, so you won't have a lot of, lot of blind spots there. So I want to run straight out here, turn off those snap to guidelines, come out into this space. I want to turn on my terrain lines too, just to make sure I'm not running into anything. And it appears that I'm not, so we're, we're in good shape there, good standing. Let's draw that out like that. And then I'd like to come in with an elementary school that kind of plays off of this angle here. Elementary school is right here, and I want to turn this, spin this around so it's this way. I want to see how far back I need to be from that main freeway, and I think if I put it in about here, that's probably going to be a good spot. In fact, though, let's come in at an angle like this. That being said, we need to take a road here and come out at a, what do you guys think, about 135 degree angle? Let's do that. We're going to come out 135 degree angle, bring it out to about there, and now I can trim this back come into our education tab, grab our elementary school, drop that into this space here. And yes, it does nestle down in there nicely. All right, so from there, I want to, oof, look at that, okay. Let's change that up. Just bring this out straight across here. And I'm only gonna bring it out to about here this time. And then I wanna come out across in this direction here, just play off of this angle. Drop in another elementary school right here. Now look at this wonkiness with the streets. I, I don't, I'm not sure I understand that. So let's just see if I can go straight in from here into here. There we go. That seems to have fixed the street. I can come back in now, nudge this into place. Okay, there we go. And now I can come back down with another one of these. Just bring this road right straight down into here, maybe to about there or so. And let's drop in our third elementary school right down in this space here. And you can see I'm kind of creating this little curved element down in here. And I thought this central area could be our bus station, if you will, for the elementary school kiddos. Now, the first thing I do, of course, is I'll upgrade all of these. One, two, three. And then I want to come back in here and kind of reorient this a little bit and bring this angle right straight down into here. There we go. And then now we can build out our little bus plaza down here in the center. And before I even jump into that, let's check out our education tab up here again. 
where are we sitting at now? See, now we've got a capacity for 22,500 students with 18,000 eligible. So I'm hoping that these will fill in really nicely too and draw away some of the uh, some of the education needs from our downtown areas in North Amundsen. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to create this bus loop that runs through the center here. And so I'm going to start by taking a one-way road here and I want to hmm, turn off my snap to guidelines. I just want to be in a space where I'm about three squares out from the main building itself. Just draw that line in there. Oh, you know what else I need to do? I need to upgrade these. There. And now I need to connect these in. So this bus lane, hmm, we're going to connect straight down into here, here. Let's go 180 degrees. Yeah, something like that. We'll cut this off. And then this will become a one way going this direction. And then we're going to run this up. All right, that's a lot better. Let's trim this piece off right here. So with that little loop in place, now we can come in and set up our little bus stops. So we want to do this. We're going to come out here and just maybe come down one and over one. I'll do the same thing right here. There, and now these will be all of our little bus stops. So we can come in now and upgrade uh, this stuff over here to bus lane only. And then each of these little tiny ones will be bus only. There you go. So now we'll put in our little bus stops here. I just want to show show you one of them as an example. A little bus stop shelter just drops in right there. And the idea is the buses will come in here into this loop and they'll turn down here. They'll drop off their kiddos and then they'll head back out and continue along on our little loop back out of this uh, out of this area here. In fact, let's upgrade some of these roads to two lanes coming through here. So this will be a two. There, and now we'll just kind of keep this nice traffic flow making its way all the way around the, uh, the loop. And then this internal space down in here, I want to drop in some faculty parking. So this is where your educators might park. So if I put in a medium parking space parking lot there, and then maybe let's see if I can get a large parking lot right in here. Uh, yeah, I think that would be just fine. So you've got two parking lots uh, for your, for your maybe this is the one for your educators and maybe this is one for, I don't know, parents pick up and drop off, something along that line. So yeah, now you've got multiple ways uh, to get the kiddos in and out of that school. We've got capacity for 22,000 students. We only have 18,000 that are eligible. We've got some room for future growth. So the last major piece that I've, of this build that I want to build out here is down in this space. And it's going to be, we're going to put in some, what I would envision to be like faculty housing for our college, to support our college, and maybe some inexpensive student housing for also those college students. So let's start by uh, coming in with a little alleyway here, just running off the back of this, this college building. Not because it's anything that's going to stay here, but really I just want to use it as kind of my uh, frame of reference. One, two, three, four. I'm going to build this out four squares there. And then I'm going to come way down into here. I'm going to turn off these grid squares. Just run right straight down into about there. And now I can delete this road, delete this road, and then start working my way around. And then what I want to do is in this area down here, just right along the back of this college, is I want to zone for U-style uh, medium density row housing. And I want to do that just by going, say, three deep. We'll do three deep over here as well. Uh, let's see, do I have space for a small park in there? I do. Okay, cool. So I can put in a park, say, right about there. And then let's come back in with some more of those EU-style row homes. And then it'll look a little bit more symmetrical, but what you'll see now is you'll eventually get these EU style row homes building in here just to fill this out a little bit. And again, maybe that's faculty housing in there. On this side over here, I think we can start fleshing out what maybe some, um, you know, some medium density homes would look like kind of nestled into this space where the students could walk to campus and they would walk by, let's build in some sidewalks here. Yeah, so we, we've, created some connectivity, if you will, between our housing area and our, our campus area over here. 
Now jumping down into here, we're going to want to cut this part off here. And then I want to drop in some parking. And we need it because when you really think about it, this is going to be an area that's uh, that's framed up by alleyways, and so there's really no place for people to park. Now, it's not going to be super overly densely populated, but at least we're going to have adequate parking for everybody who's going to be in the neighborhood. So now I've got little squares defined up here, and I can come back in with those North American medium densities and just put in, there's a 2x2 two two there, a 2x2 two two there, a uh, 2x2 two two here, a 2x2 two two here. And then we'll just kind of see how those how those fill in. Maybe now I come in with some uh, European style row that fits right in these little two, these little four squares there, and some three squares there. We're just kind of creating this little quaint little neighborhood here where you might see some uh, you might see some faculty homes, you might see some student housing mixed in there as well. And then I'm going to take a uh, North American medium density, kind of drop it into that corner. This will be a larger tower, uh, you know, not huge, but Anyhow, a little bit bigger. And then right in here, we're going to drop in an EU style medium density. Uh, maybe it's a, yeah, maybe it's a two by two right there. Yeah. And then tucked into here, we're going to stay with EU and I'm going to go three by three. And then maybe I'll just switch over to North American and come in here and go three by three as well. And then I can drop in some little two by two EU row homes right down along in this little, right down in this little you know, nook down in here. Okay, and maybe put some two by two in there, or two by one, I should say, in there. And yeah, see how this is filling in? I mean, I think this is gonna look really kind of cool when it's all said and done. So that's gonna fill in, you know, again, with some medium density type homes in here, but it really just kind of makes the area come alive. You're gonna see a lot of foot traffic coming and going, you know, all throughout the area. And uh, hopefully they're gonna take a good full advantage of this campus over here and our elementary school campus over there. All right, wow. I think this feels like a really great spot for us to jump in and do a beautification time lapse. Um, you know, I've got a lot of work ahead of me here just in, in terms of really kind of tidying things up, making it looking a little bit, making it look a little bit more elegant. But um, I just like this, uh, this look and feel down in here. And I think it's a good use of the space. So why don't you guys sit back, relax, enjoy the time lapse. Let's reconnect here afterwards and recap our sculpture.
right, welcome back. And I give you the Bell's Basin portion of the Arabica Valley. Yeah, this was our big education build for today. And I really do love the way that this one turned out. Now, as you recall at the top of the episode, we talked specifically about elementary school and college being the shortfalls for the education system here in Pangasas Bay. And today we targeted those and went after those pretty hard. Now, there's a lot to unpack in here. So let's just jump right on in. We're going to start off with our elementary school build. And why build one when you can build three? One, two, three. Yeah, we've got plenty of elementary school capacity now here in the city. We talked about that during the course of the build. We have about 18, 19,000 students in the city of Pangasis Bay. And now with the addition of this campus, we've expanded that capacity up to 24,000 elementary school students. So we've not only addressed our edu education shortfall in the present, but also set us up for future success. Now we've got a really unique build here. We built this bus loop kind of configuration here. And you can see that outer loop here that can makes its way right around by the school buildings. That's intentionally designed to keep the buses up close to the schools and the cars away from it. And so you can see our brightly painted yellow orange school bus is kind of uh, representative of what you might see in an American school district system. And there they go right into the right into the bus shelter. So we've got multiple bus shelters set up for each elementary school, one, two on this, one, two on that, one, two on that. And we've already set up bus lines taking us into Interchange Ridge and also into North Amundsen. So we're starting to spread out that education demand and this campus is gonna go a long, long way to supporting our education model here in Pangasas Bay. I dropped in this medical campus right down here in the front as well because well, accidents happen. Kiddos can get hurt on the playground and I want to make sure that, that uh, they've got a place to go in case they uh, twist an ankle or something like that. And also it's a great addition to have medical in your in your neighborhoods as well. Just uh, yeah, just help with the, the general overall well-being. We've got ample parking for our faculty in here and also you know parents can pick up and drop off from this parking lot as well. Continuing along into our neighborhood, and this is our nice little medium density and row home neighborhood with a you know with, with an immediate adjacency to our college and to our elementary school. So I really like the way that that shapes up. And you know, we've got a nice bridge coming into it with this medium-sized parking lot that comes in from the elementary school, gives you walking access, if you will, back over to the elementary campus. And then, you know, this big center parking lot here as well, because there's a lot of alleys that are thread throughout here. And you can see we're going to need some parking to, you know, to help out with that. We've also got our bus lines running through there, as you can see. And we've got two shelters that are sitting up right in this area. And then, of course, as you make your way over to this set of row homes over here, we have the home of one Raymond Hughes. Now, as you recall, Raymond made the pledge that he become a Patreon supporter if I made him one of his Sims. And we did just that. Gotta be careful what you wish for, Raymond. <laughs> now, the Raymond Hughes household, as you recall in the uh, time last, is a very wealthy household. And in fact, mm, Raymond is uh, employed by Alice Law here in town. And, and he seems to make a pretty good living. Maybe he's a young and up-and-coming attorney and uh, he's just getting his legs underneath us because he must have gone to school at our local law school right here, which features our top five design element. Yeah, that's our, our law school plaza out here. Uh, the top five design element is this this park here, this dual park system with this elegant walking structure that kind of goes through there. It, it's just this lovely gardens and a nice entrance, if you will, to our law school here in town. Now, the law school features, again, this big plaza, this this welfare office that sits in here, just really kind of doubles again as a as an administrative building. And I love the fountain that's out in front there. It just kind of has a an elegant look about it, doesn't it? And then we've got our two big colleges that sit both left and right here. So there's the right side, there's the left side. And, and I set them up to look identical because I I wanted some symmetry in this space. You know, our very prestigious law school, uh oh, the rain's starting to come down. Our very prestigious law school gives you immediate access into North Amundsen and then on into the downtown Pangasis Bay area. So I think it's gonna get a lot of use. And it's just, it's beautiful, it's elegant, it's stately, and it fit really neatly down into this spot down here. Love the way that turned out. Hey, and good luck, Mr. Hughes, on that uh, on that law career. I love it. Now, also for good measure, we dropped in this little roundabout here, custom design roundabout, and we detailed that out really nicely, just with some plantings and shrubs. And I even created a little pedestrian bridge to give us access by by foot from our, you know, our law school area and the whole Bell's Basin area on into North Amundsen over here. I think that's going to do it for today's episode. Episode. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. This one was a lot of fun for me. 
Now, you're going to want to sit tight. And you're not going to want to miss those cinematics at the end. Those are always fun. And then just as a reminder, we are a growing channel. Thanks to your support. I can't thank you guys enough for all the support that you've shown me. It's been just this miraculous journey. I think we've been doing this for about seven months now. I had a goal in my mind that I'd have a thousand subscribers in a year. We've got almost 11 now, or right about at 11,000 subscribers. And that's just truly remarkable. Now, if you saw something you, that you like today, make sure to drop us a comment below. Really love to hear from you or just throw in an emoji for the sake of engagement because that helps the algorithm distribute our content to an even wider audience. And if you're looking to throw some additional support, hey, we've got a couple of options for you now. Now we've got memberships here on YouTube, just a couple of them. If you hit that join button down below, you can get greater details. Or we've also got our Patreon page where you can explore up to four different levels of membership options, each with their own unique perks. Now, thank you so much for those of you who have already signed up. Your generosity is well, well appreciated. Now, also while you're at it, make sure to chip away at that like button and hammer that subscribe button to stay up to date on all the latest here in Pangasus Bay and our Grand Vanillica series as well. And check us out on Manor Lords too. You might see something that you like over there. All right, with all that, I'm going to bid you guys a fond farewell. And until next time, good morning, good day, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs>